Welcome to the Millbrook Railroad. This is part two of building the ES2500 switcher. And if you haven't seen part one already, I would encourage you to go back and watch part one of building a locomotive, because this is part two. We're starting by power tapping some sprockets. Power tapping is one of those things where you run a tap down through a pre-drilled hole using the motor of the milling machine. And then you stop it at the bottom and you reverse the motor and while you're doing this, you're letting the tap move the quill up and down. And that's power tapping. It can be dangerous because you can break the tap if you're not careful. But with a little bit of skill, it's a piece of cake. Let's move on to another sprocket here, except a little faster. Now this is a sprocket that goes on the jack shaft. And of course, we're tapping that hole that we're already drilled. Now we're going to flatten off a spot for the drill to go down through. Now we drill a hole, we put the tap down through the hole, and now we put the tap down through and we thread that hole that we just drilled. Simple as that. Now it's on to welding, and Bill is working on the TIG welder. He's going to first tack this uh, support on. This is a support for the coupler pockets on uh, one end of the locomotive. And it's got a single coupler pocket on, on each end. And here we see Bill soldering the, well, soldering. It's almost like soldering. This is TIG welding the support for the coupler pocket on the end of the frame. There's another support he's going to weld on there, and he's going to weld on the coupler pocket itself. But Bill is new to TIG welding. I'd say he's doing a fairly good job doing a better job than I would do. I, I haven't TIG welded in probably 30 years. Now we move downstairs to the wood shop, and Bill is working on the platform that everything is attached to on top of the, the chassis. This is the base for the body. Right now he's working on a battery box, battery box for one end. He's going to line the motor up and make sure it's pretty much in the center before he starts working on the other battery box. This locomotive takes two Group 27 batteries. They're fairly substantial size batteries, uh, deep cycle batteries. And they add quite a bit to the weight of the locomotive. They're about 90 pounds each. So uh, they're pretty much the ballast that holds this locomotive down. Now what Bill's doing right now is he's uh, taking a look at where this kind of lays and he's going to make some marks and cut it over on the chop saw. And I won't lie, I kind of have chop saw envy here. That Festool chop saw is amazing. Well, I guess it seems we're doing play-by-play -play here. Bill glues it up and gets ready to tack it down with the Brad gun. And he gets it in place, and does he get it? He gets it! He scores! Okay, I'll stop. It's 
So the only thing tackier than my jokes at this point is that Brad gun. I thought I'd show you this part in real time just to show you how much time it really does take to do something as simple as battery boxes. There's nothing complicated about them, but if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. And so that's what we're doing here. Well, that's what Bill is doing here while I watch and include you in it. 
This is the kind of work that Bill does with his day job, which is Banta Model Works. And Banta Model Works is a sponsor of today's video. That's B-A-N-T-A, modelworks.com. He makes laser cut kits for tabletop models from HO all the way up to G Gauge. You ought to check them out at bantamodelworks.com. And now Bill is putting in the last brads on the front of the battery box. Actually, that's the back of the battery box. That is the tail of the locomotive. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank Bill for sponsoring today's video. Battery boxes. Please like, share, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.